thanks tonight. Uh, good night for open uh, discussions. Uh, and before I again, uh, thank the court, uh, the third mayor will be the open discussion. Now, our first speaker for this session is the former National Security Advisor and Director General of the National Security Council Secretary, a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Georgia. Our speaker served the Philippine Navy for 14 years, reaching the rank of Captain, which is equivalent to full colonel in the Army and the Air Force. Holding a Master's Degree in Business Administration from the University of Philippines, our speaker served for a total of 18 years in the House of Representatives, where he became Chairman of the Committee on National Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Secretary Roydo Gómez. Look at 
it in terms of GDP, probably the decision was let's not go to war. Bigyan lang natin sa Argentina yan. But they went to war nonetheless. Uh, in Congress, we were confronted with an issue because China wanted to lease 2 million hectares of farm land for their food production. And we discussed that and uh, they were willing to give us all kinds of uh, concessions. In the end, uh, we said uh, that is not in our national interest. So we oppose it. But of course, in some other time, some people might say, oh, sayang yung bibigyan ng China. Uh, if China would give us 50 billion dollars, that will be in our national interest. Ipalis na natin sa kanila, yung 2 million hectares. So these are things that are really very situational. For example, now, in the case of the BPO, 1.3 million uh, employees, income of uh, 25 billion dollars, growing at a rate of 17% per annum, reaching 50 billion by 2020. Uh, but then, uh, we would like uh, to veer away from uh, America. Uh, we want to have an independent uh, foreign policy. We issue some hostile statements because we feel that, is in our, that is in our national interest because America has not treated us well in some other aspects. So I pose the question, what is our national interest there? The 25 billion annual income uh, of the BPO or uh, something else? So it, it's situational. There's no template for national interest. So now, I would like to talk about uh, survival interest, for example, very quickly. I would say that if we speak of survival interest, it would be territorial integrity, external threat, food and water security, climate change. Although climate change is something that is uh, moving in slow motion. Uh, it is not something that will wake us up all of a sudden, except extreme weather. Provision of minimum level of government service. If there's no minimum level of government service, uh, a collection of garbage, uh, security, police, then there will be a breakdown. So that will uh, be not really a matter of us being wiped out from the face of the earth, but it will still be a dissolution of uh, nationhood. Now I'd like to show this. Uh, uh, I call it uh, vital interest. And to me, vital interest would be economic development, liberation from our third world status. Right now, our category is a lower middle income. We are uh, funds with uh, so many other countries that are, some of them, not well known because we still have a very high level of poverty, about 20%. We should aim for upper middle level income or a per capita GDP of $12,000. You know what is the average uh, income of the world? $12,000 per capita. We are only less than $3,000. We're still no way from this dream of uh, liberating ourselves from third world. So I call it, it's the economy, is stupid. And look at uh, the figures there. 1966, can you read the figures? 1966, the same. that's why I call it, uh, the economy is stupid. In 1966, when I left to America to go to the Naval Academy, the Philippines had a per capita GDP higher than China, double. The, G, the per capita GDP of China, of course, Japan was uh, very high already. Our GDP was four times the per capita GDP of Indonesia. Malaysia was already very high, of course, Singapore was high. Our GDP was almost twice the per capita GDP of South Korea. That was in 1966. And now we wonder how come South Korea, Japan, uh, even Indonesia, Malaysia, can do so many things that we cannot do, can protect themselves, even from the threat of China, for example. Why? It's the economy is stupid. Why? Because now, when our GDP is less than 3,000, South Korea's GDP is $25,000. Indonesia's GDP is higher than our GDP. China, which used to be half of our GDP, is now around three times or twice our GDP, multiplied by about 1.3 billion uh, people, so you can see how much they can do. So it's the economy stupid, that's why I'd say that our vital interest is uh, 
economic development to aim to aim for a $12,000 uh, per capita GDP. What other vital interests uh, do we need? Health for all, education for all. In fact, a lot of these are connected to the economy. Ideological integrity, preservation of our democratic way of life, our Bill of Rights, peace and order, do away with the uh, well minimize major crimes, attack uh, organized uh, crimes like illegal drugs and drug related drugs, elimination of insurgency as it affects peace and order, economic development, graph and corruption, infrastructure, and energy. Major interest, what are the major interests? Higher education, especially technology, engineering, and other nation building requirements. If we are aspiring for that level of economic development, higher education goals, mass transportation is very important because uh, we, we, we know uh, how everybody is complaining about mass transportation in the Metro Manila area. And to the extent that if they see these long lines of people lining up for the MRT, we look like a plain state already. Social cultural cohesion, elimination of sectarian conflict, and of course, credible defense capability, which is connected with economic development. Now, what are the peripheral interests? Of course, peripheral would be para yung tao, no? Yung image mo, uh, it may not be a matter of survival, hindi ka magugutong, but you want to look good, you want to look respectable, excellence in culture and sports. Uh, we still uh, are dreaming of winning the first uh, Olympic gold. After uh, so many decades of participating, preservation, of course, of culture and national values. Now, what are the distinctions between and among these categories? Survival. When you say survival, the nation cannot do without addressing these interests. These are existential, existential in nature. In other words, uh, if, some, if something goes wrong, uh, if the country will not be anymore the country that uh, we know, that we, are, we have known. Failure could mean dissolution of the nation or collapse of society and public order. Failure could result in the nation becoming a failed state, just like Somalia, for example. What are the distinctions between and among these categories prior to the vital related to the goals of the country in various development aspects that we consider vital? Uh, it is connected to the goal as far as development is concerned, growth. You know, it's not just survival, you know, uh, not survival, but continued sustained growth. Failure could mean slow growth. Not 6%, not 7%, but maybe 1%, 2%, or 3%, just like what we experienced in the past. Inadequate government services, poor health, alarming crime rates. Major, important in rising to a higher level of development, such as the levels reached by, you know, it's not only upper middle income, but already the level reached by countries like Taiwan and uh, South Korea. Singapore is uh, out of the question because Singapore, I, I uh, know this is Singaporean here, Singapore is projected to have a per capita GDP even higher than the US GDP, reaching about $150,000 in several, in about uh, 20 years. Peripheral, because peripheral is symbolic of excellence as a people, uh, we want international respect. Now what are the negotiable? And what are the non-negotiable? Of course, survival interests are non-negotiable. This is a casus belli. Uh, there is no way that uh, we can negotiate this. The others are negotiable and subject to fine-tuning and calibration. Which of these would necessitate the use of force, or rather coercive measures of force, territorial integrity. That is a casus belli. Peace and order, you have to use force, uh, police force, insurgency, Graph and corruption to a certain extent, uh, you need uh, coercive measures there. And uh, I, I see that on TV, we sometimes uh, see the police force of South Korea raiding a uh, multi billion dollar conglomerate because of a graph and corruption issue. I don't know if something like that can happen here uh, in the Philippines. And uh, which of these should be pursued at whatever cost? Survival interest to be pursued at whatever cost. And to be pursued at some cost, of course, health for all, 
education.